Um, if I can explain my background, it is a science background. Yes. At school I did all the sciences, physics, chemistry, biology. At A level I did mathematics, physics, chemistry, I did chemical engineering and then IT. In all of my studies we came across western thinkers, western philosophers, western scientists and uh, never realized that Muslims also have contributed enormously to the development of science. When I came across this book about two years ago in the exhibition which was held at Manchester, I was really amazed to find out that uh, Muslims, you know, they've contributed in every field of, you know, human knowledge and development. For example, I didn't know the camera. The idea behind the camera came from Muslims. Explaining the rainbow came from the Muslims. You know, everyday things which we see in our homes, the clock, the carpet and so on, even the soap. You know, all these things, Muslims contributed to, to the development of these things. So, you know, I feel that this book not only inspired me, but if we can make this available in schools and colleges, it will do a number of things. One, it will inspire the Muslims that yes, we also have contributed to what we are studying, but it also will help to remove negative stereotypes that Muslims and Islam is not about terrorism, it's not about violence, but it is about building a human civilization. Muslims care about humanity, Muslims have contributed. So it will have an enormous impact you know, on our society. If I give you example in IT, you know, the development of computers, without the zero, there would have been no computer, you know, zero and one. And, uh, you know, we realized that Muslims are the one who came up with the idea of the zero. So the whole of the Western civilization, technological development, high tech is all, you know, is in debt to the Muslim contribution. So when I look at this book, not only am I inspired, but I feel we need to, you know, take this out to the mainstream society and show people, look, Muslims have contributed enormously. How can possible? I think we can do this in a number of ways. One is through the exhibitions which we are doing, but also to make this as a standard textbook in the national curriculum. So st children, when they study science, they will also be a, a subject, a topic on the Muslim contribution. So when non-Muslim children are reading about this, you know, they will begin to think differently. So when they see on TV Muslims are violent and, you know, the news is distorted and so on, then they are studying this they'll be able to see the difference and compare and say, hang on, Muslims were not like this. When they had power, when there was peace, when there was justice established, they were able to contribute a lot. What's happening in the world today is because of injustices, we are seeing this, so they will be able to compare and I think it will have a very positive impact, not only on their thinking, but also on the relations between Muslims and non-Muslims in the future. So I feel, you know, through, the, uh, you know, the, by, by this book, it will, you know, make an enormous contribution towards removing Islam phobia and building relations and bridges amongst the people whom we are living with. Can Just to up. give uh, examples from my own profession area, there's two things we are interested in. One is understanding the relations between people and how a society operates and secondly the business and management side. Now if you look at Ibn Khaldun's work, he was the first person to develop a methodology on the systematic re research on understanding how societies come into being, how societies change, how political systems evolve and, and, and so on. Hundred years before the West began to you know, take the uh, study of societies seriously and they drew on a lot of ideas by Ibn Khaldun. So when we do research, we, d we actually use a lot of those ideas and methodologies. Second thing is about business. You know, this, uh, the West is now obsessed by quality, is a best, uh, obsessed by employer-employee uh, employee relations and so on. If you look at Islam, it says that, uh, you know, the relations between the employer and employee, make sure you give the wages before the employee sweat dries. And if you look at quality that Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the other Khulafai Rashidin, they actually appointed people specially to go around markets to look at the quality of the products which are being sold. If they were defective or whatever, so these inspectors used to report back and action used to be taken. So employer, employee relations, quality, how should we manage people? In the West, in the beginning of the 20th century, humans were seen as machines 
and they should be treated like machines. And then much later, you know, the ideas of human relations came, but Islam said from dem day one, humans should be treated like human beings. So a lot of the ideas from Muslim contribution are being used now in developing businesses and also management thought. Thank you very much. So I feel these things will contribute a lot, right. you know, if the Western countries begin to understand Islam's contribution. Thank you. I am <coughs> very, very impressed and I also urge the audience, you know, that uh, they should try to sponsor this and help to make this available in every school of this country. It will help to change the mindset of the British public and all over the world. Once that mindset is changed, then people will respond more favorably towards Islam and the Muslims and it will remove all the negative images which uh, the media has tried to develop. So I feel, you know, it is a very, very important contribution. Yes, we do help to make mosques. We do help in other good Islamic causes. But this will help to change the mindset of a whole, you know, nation. And I think that will be an important contribution. You know, I was in, um, I went to Pakistan. Yes. Uh, Faisalabad University. And I was really amazed to see the books on science there, all translated, you know, from what we, sh we teach here. There was very little on, you know, their own heritage and, you know, what the early Muslims have contributed and so on. So I feel, you know, like Professor Sliman Hasni has been emphasized, that Muslims can also, you know, make great use of this book to understand their own heritage, which will inspire them to engage more positively in the world, that we have to contribute and engage in shaping the future world. Just like uh, the Muslims in the past did, we can draw on their thoughts, their ideas, to see how we can help humanity in the future.